Hello everyone again. I'm going to do some black box log analysis. Uh, no live stream this time because I am on the road and I know better than to try to live stream off of my laptop uh, for various reasons. So pre-recorded videos just like the old times. Um, I'm sure it'll be just fine. Uh, the first one here is from Mr. Murder1975 who has a question about his logs. There's a couple things here that I think are interesting. One is that you're running 4K PID loop and 4K motor updates, but you're running unsynced. So that's interesting to me. I wonder why you're doing that. If you're running 4K, 4K, why not run synced? Generally, people go unsynced because they want to increase the motor output rate. And of course, there are some valid questions as to what, whether there's any point at all in running the motor loop or the motor outputs faster than the PID loop. But that's not an issue uh, we'll talk about right this second. But if you're going to run them at the same rate, why not run them synced? Maybe you know something I don't, or maybe not. I don't know. The rest of your setup is uh, its a fine setup. Uh, it's a, you know, nothing stands out about the setup. It's all fine gear. Some of it's very good gear. Uh, and your all-up weight of 499 grams is incredibly respectable. Uh, any, anything below about 500 grams for a copter in the 210 to 220, maybe even 250 size range is pretty, pretty impressive. That last 30 or 40 grams when gets you down from about mm, 530 to 550 all the way down to under 500. It's a real challenge to get, so congratulations, you've accomplished something there. And you got a bumpy road. Bumpy road is usually D-gain problems. Now, that's not everybody means the same thing when they say bumpy road, but when I hear bumpy road, when I think bumpy road, it's a sort of irregular bumpiness as opposed to the sort of regular oscillations that you would expect from the P-term. That's usually excess gyro noise or excess D gain. And you talk about that here. D term looks proportional most of the time, but then sometimes it just freaks out. So let's go ahead and take a look at the log. I am using the new experimental enhanced unofficial black box log viewer. So you're just going to see some different things in my interface that are not normally here. And this is pretty cool. Let's just take a quick second to look at this. One of the things this has is can actually see all this data is stored in the black box log if you're running Betaflight 270 or better. And you can actually see all of the, Oh my goodness, isn't that cool? I've really made a mistake by showing you this because you're going to ask me where to get it. And actually, I can't even remember where the URL is. Somebody linked it to me and I downloaded it and now I've lost the URL. So hopefully someone will comment because this is some pretty cool stuff. And we can see all of this. Another thing we can do is we can actually see the numerical values as we scroll through. That is pretty cool. So we'll start off by looking at the gyro traces, and as you said there, the gyro lines are very thin. This is a very noise-free copter. No problems there. Let's take a look at the roll axis. Well, now when you say the D-term looks noisy in certain spots, maybe what you're referring to is something like this. But this, I hardly feel like is pro I don't feel like that's problematic at all. That's a little bit of high frequency noise interposed on the or on the D term, but imposed on the D term. But well, it's not really a problem, and I don't. I, it doesn't seem like the D term is going nuts. As I scroll through the file, I don't see anything that jumps out as problematic. No, let's look at the pitch axis. In fact, it all looks pretty good. Like you say. The, the D term is pretty proportional to the P term. We're looking at the pitch axis now. Okay. Nothing big here. The D term is not, actually not really very active. And your P term on yaw is... is not very high at all. Your yaw P term has almost no activity whatsoever. Now that's very interesting. Oh well, you're 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 not off the ground, are you? You're throttled. There you go. Now we're flying. I see. You weren't. Yeah, you weren't doing anything there. You must have landed. There we go. This is more like I expect to see. P term is moving a little. Well, I've got to tell you, nothing is jumping out at me. As problematic, the 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 yaw p term is surprisingly inactive, even when you're flying. I'm really surprised about that, at how neutral the p term is, almost all of the time. 
nothing in your pitch of your roll axis jumps out. I'm not sure what you mean by it looks a complete mess. Nothing in here looks a complete mess. Everything seems to freak out after a flip or a roll. All right, well, let's find a flip or a roll. There's one. But where's the freak out? There's no freak out. Nothing's happening. Roll, throttle down, roll. The roll looks completely normal. Push, strong push into the roll by the P term. Why is the D term opposing? That's weird. Here we see the I term being limited. See the I term is maxed out here. It's being capped. That's a beta flight feature. That's that's fine. That's a good thing. Notice that at the end of the move, the I term returns to zero relatively smoothly and without any overshoot or bounce back. That's great. You do have a bounce back here. Here's the rebound and oscillation here. So we could certainly ask, why are you getting that rebound on oscillation after the roll? We can see that the D term climbs and is slowing the move down. No, that's not true at all. The D term is pushing, the D term is accelerating the move. It's only, it's completely screwy. I'm really confused about what your D term is doing here. Because the P term pushes into the move, normally the D term will sort of lead the D term, or the P term. But we see the D term opposing the P term here. And likewise here, we can see the P term slowing the move down, but the D term is actually sort of canceling out the P term. If we look at the PID sum, Let's add the PID sum here. We can see that the PID sum, the P term is dominating, so the D term is not screwing us up. That's really weird though. It's really weird that the, the D term is opposing like that. That is just not what I would expect at all. I don't have a good explanation for that. So part of the reason that you're getting the bounce back is that it looks like the D term is opposing the P term, and that's preventing the P term from being as effective at slowing the move down. That may be contributing to the bounce back, the overshoot and the bounce back. I don't have a good explanation as to why that's happening, though. So that's it's really unusual. In general, your P gains don't look high. We do see sometimes when the P term gets to surging a little and the D term moves with it. What flight controller are you using? I'm using a rewrite. Hmm. Well, ah, boy, I sure don't know. See, here's what I normally expect to see. Notice that the P term is climbing and the D term is leading it. But here, I, I have no idea why the D term is opposing the P term like this. I can't explain that. That's really unusual. It's not a tu that's not a tuning thing. You could you would you could affect that's a that's a coding thing. Maybe it's because you get the spikes due to the um, RC command steps. Maybe these spikes are confusing the D term a little bit. That's the best guess I have. Here's a here's a very strong oscillation after this move, a P-term oscillation. Yeah, so you did two in a row, two sort of snaps, and the P-term really got to oscillating, and the D-term didn't do a lot to help it. Very small magnitude here. Um, I don't see any indication that you should raise your D-term, your D-gain. It's what you suggested you were going to do. It's. I think your P-gains could go higher. I think the next thing I would do if I was tuning this copter is raise the P gains. I would look at how the motor sounded on strong punch outs and how, the, how strong the prop wash oscillation was. Those are the two things in recent versions of Betaflight that I use as a good indication of where, where the P gains are. And if you watch my practical pit tuning guide, which I think the video is, the next video in that is video one is released, the next one's coming out, I think tomorrow, um, you'll see me working on that. I feel like this copter is not showing many signs of excess P gain, and I would want to work the P gain up higher, it feels like, before I started messing with D. 
Now, I, I haven't flown it, and I haven't even seen flight videos, so I'm very limited in my ability to give you feedback on it. Um, but, you know, I have, okay, so I have the black box log. But it just feels to me like the right thing to do to get a copter to fly well with recent, with modern versions of Betaflight is it, they seem to like you know, getting the P-term and the I-term tuned first and then the D-term sort of dialed in just right. And since it feels to me, looking at this log, like the P-gain could go higher, then that's probably the next thing I would do. I don't, I'm not clear on what you're talking about with the bumpy road. I think that kind of thing is very hard to see in the black box because like for example here we've got these movements of the line but is that visible in the camera i i honestly can't judge that just looking at the at the trace so i'm not really sure what to look at there and we say sometimes it freaks out but I, I don't see anything that looks like freaking out so i'm not sure we're talking about the same thing all right hope it's helpful happy flying